hi guys welcome back to my channel quite to my chain so for today's story time we're gonna be talking about my worst nanny job experience and I felt like I was treated like a slave but before we get started if you guys enjoy story times don't forget to subscribe down below so I can post more story times also do not forget to turn the notification bell on so you can get notified every single time I upload a new video don't forget to also follow me on my social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. The link will be in the description box down below for your convenience. And yeah, you guys, let's get started. So this story took place when I was about 16 years old. And disclaimer, guys, I'm catching a cold, so you might see me, you know, wiping my eye or my nose. That's why, okay? Disclaimer. So I was thinking of an 18 month old little girl and she was honestly not so hard to deal with. She was pretty easy going. So... Um, my duty as a living nanny was to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. She was also on schedule. Um, 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, give her shower, dress her up for the day, give her breakfast. Um, then she takes her nap, give her lunch. Then we go to the park and by the time her mom comes, get dinner. I feed her dinner and she probably like play for a little bit and then goes to bed. Her bedtime was at 8 p.m., right? So originally, I was supposed to do that job for the whole summer. Because like I said, I was 16 years old, so it was going to be like my summer job, right? So I was supposed to do that job for like two months and a half. And I was supposed to stay there for two months and a half. I could only go home like on the weekends. And there, there was even some weekend that I wouldn't go home because the mom still had to work and the dad was still away for work so i didn't mind okay so i know some of you guys might be wondering like you were 16 years old babysitting someone's kids yes because this wasn't a random family they were actually friends with my family so the parents of the kid of the little girl were actually friends with my parents so that's how i was able to you know babysit so it wasn't like an actual nanny job that i had to go on the website and apply no it was actually like through connection because the parents knew my parents they were like oh we're looking for a nanny and they know i love kids they were like oh we have a 16 year old daughter boom 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 that's when i end up going there and working as a living nanny for the summer so me being 16 years old, of course, I had friends I was texting with and stuff like that. So the first of her she woke me up at 7 in the morning and she was like, that's when her daughter's day start. She wanted me to give her daughter a shower and stuff like that while she was watching. So she, she wanted to see how I give her daughter a shower. She was there, I gave her daughter a shower, I dressed her daughter up, all that. And then one thing she told me was she likes when her daughter's outfit I picked the night before. So it's easier, which makes sense. So... I did my thing her food was already prepared in the fridge I literally just had to warm it up and stuff like that for her whether it was her breakfast her lunch and when the mother comes she was making dinner and packing for the next day again so I can just have to just feed her instead of having to make her food which I was happy about because you know it was less work for me and I might tell you guys how much they were paying me because it wasn't even that much but we're going to talk about it at the end of the story. So after my first dog orientation, after I was done doing everything I was supposed to do with her daughter, I put her to bed at 8 p.m. like she told me. And we sat down and talked. She was like, oh yeah, I actually like the way you take care of my daughter and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, like I actually am passionate when it comes to kids. Like I'm doing this from the heart. Like I love kids, you know. So it's not really for the money. It's more because of how much I care for kids. And then she was like, yeah, I actually like that. Like honestly, you did a good job and stuff like that. But from now on, I just want you to know that when she goes to bed at 8 p.m., you need to go to bed at 8 p.m. as well. I was like, um, okay. All right. But when she said that, I was like, okay. But in my head, I was like, but what if I'm not tired at 8 p.m.? Mind you, the girl and I, like the little girl and I, had separate rooms. So it's like, me being up was never going to have an issue with the girl's pattern. Like, what? The lady was like, yeah, like, it's best for you to sleep at the same time as her and work out and wake up at the same time as her. I'm like, okay. And in my head, I'm like, I need to talk to my mom about this because that's weird. But, of course, it's my first day, so I said, okay. And then she was like, since you did such a good job today, tomorrow you're going to be home with the girl alone. I return to work. And I was like, okay, no problem. Mind you, we're having this conversation in her living room, okay? So after we were done having this conversation, I was still in the living room with her. She was watching TV, and I was on my phone scrolling through social media. I also sent a text to my mom telling her to call me whenever she gets the chance. And she was out. Like, she would call me shortly because she was at work. So I was just there, you know, sitting down, you know, scrolling through social media. Mind you, this was like five minutes after we were done talking. Then she looked my way and says, the girl is asleep now. I think you should go to bed too. Good night. 
And I was like, but I'm not sleepy yet. And my mom said she's going to call me shortly. She was like, well, she can just call you tomorrow. You have to go to bed. The little girl is asleep. I was like, I'm waiting for my mom to give me a call. And I'm also not tired yet. And she was like, well, you can talk to your mom tomorrow. And when the girl is asleep, you need to sleep too. Because you have to wake up early at the same time as her. And I was like, yes, I understand. But I really want to talk to my mom. She was like, well, you're supposed to be at work. So it's time for you to go to bed. So I said, okay, good night. So I went upstairs in my room. I was so sad. I started crying. I texted my mom. I said, mom, please call me. Like, I really want to talk to you. So my mom, normally my mom, like, she knows if I'm insisting for her to call me, then something's going on. Like, she called me, like, within a minute. My mom heard me crying. So she was like, what's wrong? So I told her, you know, how my day went. And I told her what made me cry. And I was like, I was waiting for your call. I'm never even tired yet. And she wants me to go to bed. Like, my mom was like, where is the little girl? I said, the little girl is sleeping in her room. I'm in my room. And then my mom was like, you know, maybe you stay in the room. It's what she really needs, you know. She probably wants her alone time in her house and stuff. Because my mom is very understanding. And I was like, okay. So as I'm talking to my mom, she's cheering me up and making me feel better. And she's telling me how proud of me she is. And how much she knew I would do a good job. Because I always loved kids since I was young. And stuff like that. Then I hear a knock at the door. And I'm, I'm coming. So I go and open the door. And it's the lady. She's like, what are you doing on the phone? And I'm like, I'm talking to my mom. Like, she finally called me. And then she was like, well, you need to go to bed. And then she says, can I talk to your mom? And I give the phone. And then she tells my mom, oh, she needs to go to bed because the little girl is asleep. And I don't want her to be tired in the morning. So my mom is like, okay, let me wish her a good night. So I take the phone from my mom. My mom is like, okay, baby, like, good night. And stuff like that. We'll talk tomorrow. And I said, okay, fine, good night. After I hang up the phone with my mom, the lady looks at me and says, not because you're upstairs means that you can be on your phone. You really need to go to sleep when the girl sleeps. And I'm like, okay. So she turns off my light and, you know, close my door. In my head, I'm like, what the heck? Like, are you serious? Anyways, so the next day come, I forgot to set my alarm at 7 o'clock in the morning. And the lady comes and just like, get in the room and says, it's 7 one Why aren't you up yet? You have to be taking care of her at 7 in the morning. That's when her day starts. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, I forgot to set my alarm. And then she was like, that's the thing, because you didn't sleep when she slept yesterday. You need to wake up on time. Da, da, da. She started going off. In my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, literally, you only been like one minute. Like, what? She said, seven is seven on the dot. That's when you need to be in her room at seven. Seven is seven on the dot. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. And then she said, all right, go get her ready. So I go and get the girl ready and stuff. She's getting ready for work. And she leaves her work. You know, I do what I'm supposed to do with the girl and stuff. Then, when it's about lunchtime, I hear someone getting in the house. I hear a key. And she opens, she comes and sees me. You know, I was feeding her daughter lunch. She was like, all right, you're feeding her lunch at the right time. That shows me that you're really doing your job and you're following the hours I gave you. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. And then she was like, all right, that's all I came for. I just came to make sure that you're actually doing what you're supposed to do at the time you're supposed to do it. And then she was like, because you young gains don't know how to listen and follow directions. Mind you, I was just feeding her daughter. I was just feeding her daughter. Did not say anything. Mind you, she came to see what I was doing. Then she left to go back to work. And then 8 p.m. came. She was already home. I took the daughter to bed and I went to my room. I was just on my phone like I wasn't tired at all like I wasn't sleepy I was so used to sleeping late like at 11 p.m. midnight and now I have to sleep at 8 so that change was just so, so pushed so I couldn't just you know sleep at 8 like what I'm not a machine like that I can just get turned off you know so I needed time to adjust to that schedule but the lady did not understand that the lady just wanted me to just go to bed and make that change that quick but it wasn't really possible like I said I'm used to sleeping so late and all of a sudden, I have to sleep at 8 p.m. So 8 p.m. when I was putting the daughter to bed, I was going to my room and just being on my phone. And mind you, I'm used to locking my door. I don't like to sleep with my door unlocked. I always lock my door. So I locked my door that day. Around 8, 15 p.m., she comes and tries to open my door. And I'm like, I'm coming. So I come and I unlock the door. She says, at my house, no one locks the door. Mind you, she literally yelled at me saying that it wasn't like, I'm a house, you know, I prefer the door unlocked. No, she literally said, I'm a house, no one locks the door. And I'm like, okay. In my head, I'm like, this is crazy. So, 
she's like, what were you doing? I'm like trying to go to sleep. She said, trying? You're supposed to be asleep by now. You're trying to go to sleep? And I'm like, yes, um, I'm really trying to go to sleep. And she was like, well, where's your phone? So I showed her my phone. I was like, here. And then she was like, if I find out that you be on your phone when you go to bed, I'll have to take your phone away when you go to bed. And then walks out. Yo, I just started crying. I texted my mom. I was like, mom, this is a lot. I want to go home. Like, I can't do this anymore. So my mom calls me. And I don't pick up her call. I text her. I say, I, don't, I cannot be on the phone. I cannot talk to you. Text me. I don't want her to come and take my phone away. My mom was like, take your phone away. I said, yeah. And she said, if I'm not sleeping, when it's time for me to be asleep and I'm on my phone, she will have to take my phone away. And then my mom is like, okay, just try to go to sleep. We'll talk tomorrow. And I said, okay, good night, mom. The next day came, my alarm was set, 7 o'clock, I was up, I did what I was supposed to do. So throughout the day, she would also call me to check on me and make sure I, I did what I was supposed to do with her girl. So I missed her call, y'all. Literally, the phone was upstairs, I was thinking of the girl downstairs. So I missed her call that morning, so she called the home phone and I picked up. So she was like, I don't like the fact that you didn't pick up my phone call, you're taking on my daughter, okay? And every single time I call, you need to pick up, and I was like, I'm sorry, like, I literally left my phone upstairs. Because I was feeding the, the girl. I wanted to make sure I did it at the time I was supposed to. And she was like, all right, just make sure next time you have your phone with you. I don't have to call the home phone for you to pick up. And I was like, okay. Right then, then when I was done feeding her daughter, her daughter was taking a nap. I went ahead and called my mom. I told my mom everything. My mom was like, you know, just hang in there. Just try to listen to her and stuff like that. And I was like, okay. Less than five minutes later, y'all, after her daughter was taking a nap, she called me and she said, why aren't you taking a nap? And I'm like, I'm not tired. She said, yeah, you also have to nap when she takes a nap. Why are you up? What are you doing up? I was like, okay, I'll try to take a nap. And then I got on the phone. I called my mom again and I was like, mom, <laughs> now I have to take a nap too. Like, this is too much. My mom was like, just hang in there. Like I said, listen to her and stuff. So I said, okay, mom, I got it. So I wasn't taking a nap. I'm not going to sit here and cat. I wasn't. Like, I was literally just laying down on my phone i wasn't taking a nap she had cameras upstairs so i couldn't even be downstairs while the daughter was upstairs so i was just going in my room like i said being on my phone so that night at 8 p.m i took her daughter to bed i went to my room as well i did not lock the door like she says people at the house should lock the door so i went to bed and i put my phone on the side and i was just there crying i literally cried myself to sleep so the next day which was day four i did what she told me to do from you know taking care of her daughter at 7 a.m to put her to sleep at 8 p.m. But that night, I wanted to be on my phone because I couldn't sleep. Like, what? The night before, I cried myself to sleep. And that night, I couldn't sleep. But I was literally doing it under the covers, you know, until I fall asleep. So this went on for a couple of weeks, okay? She never caught me or anything until this one very day. She just burst into my room, like, around 8.30 p.m. and saw me under the covers on my phone. Like, you know, when you're under the covers on your phone, like, the light, if someone walks in, they can see the light. And then she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm just on my phone. I'm trying to fall asleep. That's what really helps me fall asleep. And then she was like, give me your phone. What did I tell you? Give me your phone. And then I was like, I'm not doing anything wrong. Like, I'm literally trying to sleep. She was like, I said, give me your phone. So I gave her my phone. Mind you, I had a password, so I didn't worry about, you know, her getting my phone or anything like that. So she was like, now you can go to bed. Good night. And walked out. The next day at 7 a.m., when I woke up to take off her daughter, she gave my phone back. Here, and make sure you don't miss any of my calls. And I said, okay. So I took the phone, um, took off her daughter, did it a day of things. She called me throughout the day. I was picking up and stuff like that. Did what I was supposed to do. And then when the girl was taking her nap, I called my mom. And I told my mom everything. I told my mom, I said, this is it. And it was like on a Friday. And mind you, I go home on the weekend, right? That weekend I was supposed to go home. I told my mom, I said, I cannot do this anymore. After I go home today, I'm not coming back. Like... This is too much to the point of taking my phone. That's crazy. I was like, I don't even care about the money. Like, she was supposed to pay me like $300 a month. So I told my mom, I was like, yeah, she's so rude. She's so evil. Like, I just can't. Like, I can't stay here anymore. When I come home tonight, because they drop me up on Friday nights and pick me up on Sunday nights. So I'm like, when I get home tonight, mommy, I am not coming back here. Mind you, for the first few weeks of me working there, I did not even get to go home because she was so busy with work. But that weekend, I was going home. So I was like, yeah, mommy, when I get home, I'm never coming back here. This is it. And my mom was like, just, you know, do what you're supposed to do for the rest of the day. And when you come home, 
we'll talk about this okay so i had like a mini suitcase with me so every single time i went back home i always took my suitcase mind you that weekend i made sure i took every single thing that belonged to me in that home and put it in my little suitcase so that night i did not have to put her daughter to bed because they were dropping me off at my parents so you know she got her daughter in the car you know i got in the car with my mini suitcase mind you i had every single thing packed in there and she was like all right how was your week and i was like my week was fine she was like how was the girl while well, we we're driving to my parents house she was like how was the girl i thought like, the girl was great like everything went well like she enjoyed the part time because you know i took her to the park too she enjoyed part time you know she was taking her nap like she was supposed to and i was making sure i was following the schedule you gave me and she was like all right good so once we get to my parents house she was like all right i will see you on sunday night okay and i was like okay in my head i already knew I was never going back there. So I took my mini suitcase and went to my parents' house. So I got there, I started crying, I told my mom everything. And my mom called the lady that same night because I was crying so much. My mom was like, yeah, you must have been really like mistreated. And I was like, yeah, very much so. Extremely, like I was treated like a slave. And my mom was like, all right, let me call her. So my mom called her and was like, just son is here telling me that, you know, she don't like the way she's being treated and she never want to come back. And then the lady was like, oh, I think there's a misunderstanding somewhere. I think we should come and sit and talk and all those things. And then my mom was like, all right, you can come tomorrow and we can talk. So the next day she came with her husband and she was like, what's going on? Mind you, her husband doesn't know much because he's barely around. So she was doing most of the talking. She was like, you know, I'm just making sure that she has an actual schedule herself because the girl has one and stuff like that. Me taking her phone wasn't a way to like punish her for real it's for her own good started saying all these crazy things and i was like yeah mommy i'm not going back there and then my dad was there my dad was like, i think you should give it a shot again i was like no i'm not going back there like this is it while we're all talking you know i was trying to tell them i'm not going back there my dad trying to tell me you know maybe you should consider it my mom telling me if you really don't want to go back don't go back the lady telling me oh it's a misunderstanding i'm doing this for her own good her husband was just there he wasn't saying much but at the end he was like personally i cannot say much because i'm not around often but my wife did tell me that she's a good nanny she takes good care of our daughter so if she says she doesn't want to work with us anymore that's her choice but personally i know she's a good nanny and then his wife was like exactly even my husband knows i always tell him that she's a good nanny like why would i mistreat her she started going off and then her husband was like have you paid her and then she was like no i was supposed to pay her next week so her husband was like i'm coming so he went to the car and came back with his checkbook and he signed me a 300 dollars check and he was like here's for your first month and i was like thank you and he was like you know it's up to you whether you want to come back to us or not and then i was like i'm not coming back i was like i appreciate you guys for trusting me as a 16 year old to take off your daughter it was nice working with you guys but i just cannot do this anymore and then um once again, my dad tried to convince me. I said, no, 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 no. My mom was like, yeah, let's let's respect her decision. She knows why she said that. So after I was done telling the parents how much, you know, I appreciate the fact that they even gave me the opportunity as a 16-year-old to work with the girl and stuff like that. I looked at the little girl because she was there with them. And I told her, you know, I'll miss you. It was nice taking care of you and all that good stuff. So the husband got up and was like, I guess we're done here. And he looked at me and said, if there's any change, in your decision make sure you give us a call back we would love to have you back and then yeah they all got up and left so the next day which was sunday the lady called my mom and was like they just didn't change her mom my mom was like no she still doesn't want to come back and then she was like i don't think this is fair like tomorrow is monday how am i supposed to get a nanny for tomorrow who's gonna wash her tomorrow like me staying home will be me putting my job in danger because i don't know when i will find a nanny like my mom was just like I don't know what to tell you, just since she's not coming back. She was like, wait, it's your daughter. You need to convince her, make her come back. That I'm was like, yeah, that's what I'm not going to do. Like, she doesn't want to come back. I respect her decision. She doesn't want to come back. She doesn't want to come back. And the lady was just going off. She was like, yeah, this is not right. She was like, that's why you don't mix business and pleasure. Like, I trusted you guys because we are family friends. And look now, like now I'm left here with no nanny who's going to watch my daughter. Like, if I would have hired a random person, they would have never done this type of stuff to me. They would have respected the contract i was like, in my head i'm like we didn't sign no contract but anyways she was like we had respected the two months and a half that they were supposed to stay at my house on top of that i was feeding her all the stuff mind you guys saturday was her grocery shopping day and for the past few weekends that i did not go home i'll go grocery shop with her and she'll be like tell me what you want me to get you as food mind you every single thing i put on the list she will never get them she'll get whatever she wants to get and whatever her daughter needs and that'll be it so in my head i'm like you were feeding me the food 
that you were cooking for yourself or for your daughter. You weren't feeding me like anything that I really wanted because my type of food was like African food and she wasn't like the type to cook that. She was African, yes, but she wasn't the type to cook the type of food. And I wanted to like make some food that I love. That's why I would add that on the list and she would never get those. And then she was literally controlling my portions as well. Literally, like, when she makes food and packs for her daughter, she'll pack my food too. I cannot eat more than this amount that she gives me. I was sometimes hungry after eating the meal she was giving me. But I was grateful because I was getting fed. So her being on the phone telling my mom, oh, but I was feeding her. Girl, you were barely feeding me. But like I said, I still appreciate it. But you were barely feeding me, okay? Yo, like, that really, like pissed me off like my mom was like if she calls you or texts you don't pick up my mom told my dad the same thing like don't pick up right now she's angry unless it's her husband let's not pick up her calls anymore because she was already losing i'm talking about going off like a crazy person and i told my mom was like that's what she gets that's karma if she treated me well i could still be there but she's not a good person so now she gotta figure this out and i was like i don't think anybody is gonna want to wash her daughter and do all those things for the price she's paying me three hundred dollars what is that three hundred dollars a month by the way the check he gave me was three hundred dollars so i told my i said of course she's going crazy right now because she knows the money she was giving wasn't even that much especially with all the work i had to do and i had to live in i was like she's not gonna find a nanny on top of that she's unbearable like she's just too much i told my i was like good luck i'm sure she's not gonna find a nanny unless it's gonna be a family member or something no one is gonna do that like yeah so the following friday her husband reached out to my dad and asked my dad if i changed my mind my dad was like just did not change her mind she still doesn't want to come back and then her husband was like all right thank you that was it her husband calling my dad was the last interaction they had after that everybody stayed in a corner of course they would see each other in african gathering they would say hi but that'll be it and i also heard that she was going around telling people that i'm not reliable i'm a bad nanny and she was like i almost made her lose her job because i quit the job and she had no nanny for a couple of weeks and stuff like that like girl i do not care like you should have been a nicer person and this was never gonna happen like it costs nothing to be nice and it costs nothing to understand other people as well she was once a teenager so she knows that like sometimes we do need other things as distractions like tv phones social media like i'm not a big tv person so my phone was literally my distraction and she didn't even let me do that like come on now all right you guys that's the end of today's story time i hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys did don't forget to give it a thumbs up once again don't forget to subscribe down below it is free the notification bell also you can get notified every single time i upload a new video do not forget to follow me on my social media platforms instagram twitter snapchat and tiktok the link will be in the description box down below for your convenience comment down below if you have ever had a bad nanny experience or if you have had a bad experience at any job that you have had i would love to read it so we can chat in the comment section down below and if you are a returning subscriber you already know it it's all love. Thank you so much for your love and support. I truly, truly appreciate you guys. And I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.